So now we're going to be looking at monopolistic competition with heterogeneous firms. So this is relatively recent type of, of models uh, so developed during the uh, 2000s. So essentially what we're doing, we're combining um, monopolistic competition. So where firms are differentiated, they're producing differentiated products, uh, meaning that they have a markup uh, with free entry. Okay. But we're also assuming that firms are heterogeneous, that they're different. Some firms are more profitable than others. How can we square that with free entry? That's what we're going to be looking at uh, in the following here. Okay, so uh, simplest case of uh, heterogeneity where different um, agents are different is uh, two. Uh, so let's uh, look at two. So, okay, so if it's a, clearly if it's a industry with heterogeneous firms and monopolistic competition, uh, there's gonna be, or rather monopolistic competition part means that there's gonna be more than two firms, but we uh, just illustrate with, with two to make it uh, to make it simple. Okay. So we have um, two firms. We assume that they're completely symmetric in terms of, of the demand. So they're facing some downward sloping demand curve, uh, just as usual in, in monopolistic competition. Um, and um, they, as usual, um, say at this stage, um, have then a downward sloping marginal revenue curve. Uh, okay. Now let's get to the um, heterogeneity. So we have one firm we can call H as in high productivity. Um, what does being highly productive here mean? Well, it means having a low marginal cost, okay? So MC, that seems like high, but you know, it's a highly productive firm, meaning it has low marginal cost. Okay, so it says quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We'll have a pH and its variable profits will be given by the difference between price and the constant marginal cost times the number of units that it's selling. So this is its variable profit. Okay, um, if we have someone called H or high, we're also likely to have someone called L or low. So that's uh, this poor fellow. Okay, so she here has uh, MCL, uh, high marginal cost. It also sets um, quantity where marginal cost uh, intersects with marginal revenue and has PL selling this, this quantity and has this variable profit. Okay, so here we have the heterogeneity part very clearly. We have one firm that uh, produces higher quantities, has lower prices and higher variable profits than its uh, compatriot here. Now the question of course is how can we reconcile this with free entry, okay? So free entry means that we expect firms, as long as there are profits to be had in the industry, we expect firms to be coming in. Okay? So if there are zero profits for a firm like this, clearly this firm would be making profits and vice versa. If this firm is making zero profit, a firm like this would be making losses. Okay, so how can we reconcile the two? Well, the modeling trick that we've adopted is that we're assuming that firms take the fixed cost first uh, and only after having paid that fixed cost uh, do they know or get to know what their marginal cost is, okay? Only after having paid the fixed cost do they, is it revealed to them how productive they would be. Um, okay, so we could think of the fixed cost of entering the industry as paying a lottery ticket. You know, if, if you're lucky, you get a low marginal cost. If you're less lucky, uh, you get a high marginal cost, okay? Uh, so this means that in expectation, uh, you know, profits could be zero. The probability that you do very well uh, is sort of balanced by the probability that you do badly, that you get a high marginal cost draw, okay? 
So let's uh, look at that in, uh, in, in some detail. Okay. So, you know, in, in the book, we have an example where we use a die. So essentially, if you throw dice, you know, it runs from one to six, you know, if you get a one, you have high profits. If you have uh, six, you make a lot of losses, uh, et cetera. And on balance, uh, you have zero, zero profits. But a more continuous or a continuous case would be here. So we have marginal cost along the... Um, uh, horizontal axis, we measure profit along the vertical axis. Okay, so assume that we have variable profits like like here. So the variable profit. Okay, um, and we're getting lower. Uh, the higher marginal cost you have, the lower our profits up to some point MC over bar here. So we could think of this as the point here on the uh, where the marginal cost is as high as the intercept of the demand uh, curve here. Okay, so if marginal costs are this high, you know, you will not be making any variable profits. Your, your costs are higher or just as high as whatever the single most comes the single consumer that has the highest willingness to pay. But you know, as as if you're luckier than that, you're getting lower marginal cost draws, uh, then you will be uh, making some some profits. Um, okay, um, but let's not just look at variable profits. We also have the the. Um, the um, fixed cost of entry. So this was be, be the fixed cost, which means that this is the uh, overall profit. Okay, the variable profit uh, minus the fixed cost of entry. Okay, and there could be some, when you're tossing out the die, there's some maximum level of how bad it can be. It's like the number six is the highest value that you need to come with for the die. It's not going to be 1,000, right? Okay, so when the firm is making this investment, deciding whether to take the fixed cost, says, well, if I get a low marginal cost draw, okay, I'm going to be making a surplus. I'm going to be making a, well, just put it there, plus. You know, exposed, I'm going to be making uh, a profit here. Uh, that's going to be balanced against or counter counterbalanced by high marginal cost draws where uh, I make a loss. Okay. Uh, some of these are going to be high enough that, you know, I don't even bother. I just pay the fixed cost and, and you know, too bad I lost in the lottery. I walk away. Some of them are going to be. Some of the marginal cost draws are going to be, um, you know, low enough that you choose to operate. You know, had you known that you would be this inefficient, you wouldn't have have purchased a lottery ticket. But you know, now that you purchase a lottery ticket, that's a sunk cost. And as long as your variable profits are positive, uh, you keep on uh, you keep on uh, producing. Okay, so this is how we can think of monopolistic competition with heterogeneous firms, okay? And that's something that's um, it's been proven very useful to match patterns in the real industries, okay?